Hi everyone, welcome back to Emergency Chaos where we provide tips and tricks to new ER nurses. Today, we will be going over a medication that you need to know like the back of your hand. So without further ado, let's get into talking about propofol. Well, before we do that, let's get something out of the way. So as a nurse, you are held to a high standard. So before any medication is ever given to your patient, despite if it's by you or even the provider you have to know what it is why it's being given and essentially that it's appropriate for your patient because in the eye of the public and even the law you are there to protect your patient and the best way to do this is by being educated and confident in what you know in order to stop things that shouldn't be occurring if not, you could be liable for your patient, right? So it's important that you pay attention while you're precepting, that you ask lots of questions and not just for medications, but for anything. If you don't know, you ask. And this is just so that you can stay safe and be safe for your patients. So let's get into it. What is propofol? It's an anesthetic slash sedative with amnesic properties. So essentially it's gonna put someone to sleep and they're, they're not gonna remember what happened. It has several uses. One being sedation for patients who are intubated. However, one key factor with using propofol as sedation for patients who are intubated is that it does not alleviate pain. It does not have any analgesic properties. So you have to also ensure that while your patient is on propofol, they also receive a medication or are on another drip that addresses pain, right? Because being intubated, being in a hospital, laying on the bed, it's, something's going to be hurting, right? And with your patient being intubated and sedated, they really can't communicate that to you. So you have to also get another medication, uh, another drip uh, on top of propofol in order to address the patient's pain, right? And then this is typically going to be uh, fentanyl, so a fentanyl drip. So again, propofol does not alleviate pain, but one of the uses is sedation for patients who are intubated. The next use for propofol is as an induction agent for conscious sedations, meaning it's used to put someone to sleep for a brief period of time in order to get some type of procedure done. This is commonly done with ortho procedures. For example, if someone breaks a bone in order to realign this bone, or in other words, to reduce the fracture, they will have to tug and pull, which is very uncomfortable. And it's much easier for the procedure to be done if the patient is asleep during it. Um, and then the next use for propofol is as an induction agent for rapid sequence intubation, meaning putting someone to sleep so that they can be intubated safely by the providers. Propofol is used often throughout ERs because of its quick on, quick off trait. So it's, it's onset is within one minute and it's approximately 40 seconds, but for sure within one minute and it lasts approximately 10 minutes. So again, it starts to work very fast, and it doesn't take too long for it to get out of the system. So for the effects to wear off. So for this reason, it's used a lot of sedation for intubated neuro patients because it can be turned off and then an accurate neuro exam can be performed since the propofol wears off very rapidly. So do note that sedation or the time propofol takes to wear off will be longer on patients on long-term propofol infusion. So it may take, it may take longer than the 10 minutes that we're discussing but and then i've also noticed that patients with liver issues um also take uh, longer for the sedation to wear off but in the short term though for neuro patients it's very good because it comes off the sedation comes off and then a good neuro assessment uh can be done on your patients so with everyone everyone is human so even providers right so as, as the nurse, you have to have an understanding of dosing, which is why we're going to talk about dosing a little bit, because you want to make sure that you're in a patient is not getting a crazy high dose or even getting under dose, right? So the more you know, the safer you are, and you have to err on the side of caution. So dosing for a conscious sedation is 0 0.1 to 1 milligram per kilogram for the initial dose, and then it can be redosed if needed if the patient starts to wake up during the procedure, right? For a rapid sequence intubation, the dose is typically 1.5 milligrams per kilogram. And then for patients who are intubated, I've seen different ranges, but the most commonly is 5 to 50 micrograms per kilogram per minute with a typical starting rate of 5 micrograms per kilogram per minute and titrating it by 5 micrograms. Titrating drips is a work of art 
because you can't always start at five micrograms because it may not be enough to say they to, to sedate every single one of your patients right so sometimes if the patient is bigger or if they're drug users uh stuff like that you may have to start even higher you may have to start at 20. so you have to kind of play by uh play by ear play it by how your patient is responding to the medication but you definitely want to do this with your preceptor um because they're going to be uh, more comfortable and more confident they're going to have more experience with handling propofol and titrating it accordingly and then of course if your protocols are saying oh you have to start at five but you know it's not going to uh, be enough you also coordinate with your doctor saying hey like i'm just going to do this um just so you know and they're usually going to give you the okay but definitely uh verify with your doctors too and do try to follow your policy and then Whenever, again, whenever you handle propofol, especially when you're titrating, just make sure you're doing it with your preceptor so they're uh, walking you uh, with how to do everything appropriately because it is one of the medications that you could kill somebody if you're not careful with it. And then we're going to get into talking about the side effects and the complications on the next few slides. So nursing implications, right? The main side effects we have to worry about when it comes to propofol is hypotension and respiratory depression. So again, hypotension and respiratory depression. If your patient is undergoing a conscious sedation for a procedure, as we discussed, you better be repeating the blood pressure every five minutes while they're while they're doing the procedure right and your patient must also be on the cardiac monitor with continuous pulse oximetry, and you better have end title in place and most importantly you better be actively looking at your pa patient's chest for equal chest rest and fall meaning they're actually taking a deep breath because if they're not you need to immediately intervene to ensure that they're getting properly oxygenated and ventilated right if you are using propofol as sedation for an intubated patient, well, they're already intubated, so you don't really have to worry about the respiratory drive too much unless they extubate themselves, right? Which is why it's good for them to be appropriately sedated. So while they're intubated, the main thing that you're going to worry about is the blood pressure, making sure that it's maintaining and not dropping on you. So when you first start propofol on somebody as an infusion, you need to check the blood pressure every five minutes for at least three times to see how your patient is responding and if you're actively titrating for sedation you have to keep on checking the blood pressure every five minutes to ensure that it's not dropping if your patient is requiring more and more sedation you have to keep going up and you have to keep going up on the probe and the bp is not holding and it's dropping you're going to have to discuss with your providers of possibly switching the sedation the sedation to an alternative medication like for said or if not considering adding like a presser like leave a fed to maintain the blood pressure while um, adequately keeping your patient sedation um, as it should be right so other important things that you have to keep an eye on as the nurse is when handling probe you have to change the tubing every 12 hours to prevent any bacterial growth and you have to use strict aseptic technique and good hand hygiene again and this is to prevent any bacterial or microbial growth so that your patient doesn't get a, a secondary infection from you not taking care of uh, propofol as you should be right another very important tip is to never ever let your drips run dry meaning don't let them uh, finish before replacing them especially your sedation um, so a good way to prevent this from happening to you is when you set up the pump input a smaller volume to be infused so the, the so the pump beeps on you saying hey the infusion is complete but in reality it's not because you still have a little left over you can reprime it to uh, infuse whatever's left and then that gives you enough time to get a new bottle of propofol or whatever new medication you need and then you rehang and you reprime it and do the same thing so again that's a really good way of not letting your infusions run dry especially with propofol and any sedations right um another thing that i want you to talk about with your preceptor though is i want you to ask him what a snack is when regards to propofol so again just ask your preceptor hey what is a snack when uh when we talk about propofol and then finally, I've never seen this myself because patients get transferred up to the ICU usually uh, in a relatively quick basis. Although, and it's all the rare, there is always a possibility of a, a propofol infusion syndrome, which is it, from my understanding, it occurs with high doses and from pro prolonged use. So they're on it for a long time at a really high dose. And it's just characterized by uh, arrhythmias and cardiovascular collapse, amongst other things like rhabdo and a couple of other stuff. But always keep it at the back of your mind if your patient is on propofol and they're suddenly uh, uh, going through cardiovascular collapse. 
So let's summarize. Propofol is very useful for its quick onset and short duration. The main side effects you need to watch out for are hypotension and respiratory depression. And never, ever, ever let your infusion run out, especially sedation, because your patient can wake up, be confused, and possibly extubate themselves, right? So never let it run, run out. So let's go into the question of the day. So what are the medications given to treat hyperkalemia? So again, what are the medications given to treat hyperkalemia? And the answer to this question will be at the bottom of the description text. So thank you again for your time today. If you enjoyed the video and learned something from the content today, I would really appreciate a like and a follow. And if anything comes up um, that you would like me to co cover, please comment below. And I want to say thank you to the people who have commented below. They are on my list. Um, I know that one of my upcoming videos is going to be on RSI, so rapid sequence intubation. And I want to make sure that it's really good. So it's going to take me a little while to get it out, but I am working on it. And then also in the description, I've listed my favorite ER nursing related books, and I think you're going to enjoy them too. I think that being a good ER nurse depends a lot on your experiences and taking the time to look up and familiarizing yourself with topics that you don't fully understand. So always keep learning, my friends, so that you can be safe for yourself and so that you can be a good ER nurse for your patients. And then as always, teamwork makes the dream work. And here at Emergency Chaos, we are proactive and not reactive.